joining forces, we intend to solve problems for the people of Minnesota and work on uh, issues like jobs and health care and education and all of the issues that impact people's lives. And so I couldn't be more excited to be here today, uh, joining forces with the congressman to move Minnesota forward and to represent people in a way that makes a positive difference in their lives. And I turn it over to Congressman Nolan. Well, um, thank you, and, and <clears throat> thanks everybody for being here today. Um, administration find that common ground mm -hmm. fix the things that we can fix uh, and make sure that uh, we uh, uh, people of Minnesota have good jobs and yeah. good health care and our children have good education mm -hmm. and uh, we are convinced beyond any doubt there's widespread common agreement yes. on that and uh, that's what we're going to search for is the common ground mm -hmm. solve problems fix things uh, get things done and that's mm -hmm. the kind of administration we uh, propose to offer to the people of the state of Minnesota yeah, absolutely. As the Congressman mentioned, we live in very divisive political times and there's just so much corrosiveness and gridlock and things just not getting done for people. And we want to bust through that gridlock and really focus on people's lives and helping people and making a difference in people's lives. Uh, one of the ideas we've talked about, should we be fortunate to be elected by the people of Minnesota in November, is uh, even uh, before we take office, we are going to meet with every member of the Minnesota legislature, all 201 of them, Republican, Democrat, we're going to meet with them. We're going to meet with their families because the people who run for public office, they care. Nobody runs for public office to have gridlock. Nobody runs for public office because they don't care. Every single person who steps forward and puts their name in the ring to run for office, they want to do things for our state and our country. They want a better society. And we're going to meet with them and find out what are their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations and how can we work within that to find common ground that moves Minnesota forward. So I'm just uh, incredibly grateful and uh, very much look forward to working with you and, and uh, great to team up with you here. Well, Attorney, Attorney General has been one of the most, well, in fact, the most accomplished Attorney General anywhere in the United States of America. Selected as one of the top 10 lawyers mm -hmm. in the country. And um, Lori Swanson has just had a remarkable 10 year uh, history of fixing things, solving problems for the benefit of people here in the, the state of Minnesota, and I'm uh, uh, I couldn't be more honored to to be asked to serve with you and to uh, be able to play a part in what hopefully will become your administration. Well, very good, and I feel the exact same way about Congressman Nolan. So we're happy to take any questions if there are any. You make it sound like a co-governorship. Yeah, you know, we got big problems uh, facing uh, the state of Minnesota, and we need all hands on deck. And both of us bring a history of problem solving and forward looking solutions. I have worked on bread and butter issues as Attorney General, whether it's issues involving our senior citizens and protecting senior citizens from abuses, uh, whether it's tackling the pharmaceutical industry, whether it's uh, taking on some of the problems in higher education or representing small businesses that are having a variety of challenges. And, uh, and we've gotten results. Uh, we have focused on these bread and butter issues and we focused on getting results. Uh, Congressman Nolan in the Congress uh, as well has been somebody who's been a problem solver. Uh, as I mentioned, he is just one of 24 Democrats in the entire US Congress who is a member of the Problem Solvers Caucus. And they get together and they have an agreement that I think it is if 75% of them or something agree on uh, bills that they'll all vote for the bill even if they don't agree because they're trying to bust through this gridlock and try to find a way to move this country forward. And uh, I'm just thrilled to have his expertise. Uh, my expertise has been in the executive branch. I've been in the executive branch of government as a leader for 12 years, leading the Attorney General's office. Uh, Congressman Nolan has 16 years of uh, legislative and congressional experience. Uh, representing people of the United States of America in the Congress, but also in the state legislature, and has had a great deal of experience there. And we look forward to taking that combined experience and moving Minnesota forward. Why now? Why make this pivot from the Attorney General's race to the Governor's race at this late date? Sure. So I had uh, my name was placed into nomination as Attorney General. Um, one of the things that I did in this campaign is not um, take any pledges. Uh, not fill out any of those questionnaires, much like you hear Governor Pawlenty say he's not going to fill out questionnaires or take pledges. I'm going to make one pledge, and that's a pledge to the people of Minnesota to always put their interests first and to always represent the people of Minnesota in the best way I humanly know possible. So at the convention, I had my name placed in nomination. 
And it was clear because of not taking some of those pledges and filling out some of those questionnaires, it was the most common issue I heard on the floor of the convention is, will you take this pledge, will you take that pledge? And I said, no, I'm not taking any pledges other than to the people of Minnesota. And so when that first ballot came back, it allowed me to step back and evaluate uh, what, um, what I was going to do, and I deliberated on it. Congressman Nolan and I have been friends, uh, uh, along with his wife Mary, for a dozen years. He's from the 8th Congressional District. I have family. My family's roots are in Minnesota's 8th Congressional District. We've known each other. We've talked about all of these issues over the years, uh, and I spent a lot of time in the 8th Congressional District. Issues like jobs and the economy. How do we make the economy move for people? How do we protect our senior citizens uh, in a time when they're increasingly financially squeezed? What do we do about this outrageous cost of college? I mean, the cost of college has gone up a thousand percent in 30 years since when I went to college. And so um, um, we eva I evaluated uh, and uh, decided to move forward this way. Uh, we both had opportunities to run for governor over the past year. We both have had a lot of encouragement to run for governor over the past year. We both stepped forward from that position uh, and from that campaign, Congressman Nolan because of family considerations, myself because I had a case involving 3M. It was the biggest environmental case in Minnesota history, and I had an obligation to the people of Minnesota to see it through. How about and Congressman Nolan? What happened to retirement? Well, that's a good question. Um, I said to my <laughs> wife this morning, I, I'm not sure if a, a love and a commitment to public service is a is a blessing or a curse. <laughs> Uh, but I must tell you, when I, I got a call from Attorney General Swanson asking me to be her running mate, it was a, a, a compelling request. Um, I have such admiration and respect for her. You know, she's the only one in the race that has the kind of executive experience that uh, a, a governor is responsible for. And she has this remarkable record of having fixed so many things and gotten so many things done uh, for the people here in the state of Minnesota. Um, I'm now where I want to be, which is back in Minnesota, <laughs> and uh, so um, I, I'm just a few blocks uh, down the street, if, should we be successful from mm -hmm. the family, so, uh, and uh, to be able to uh, serve and, and uh, collaborate in, in a Swanson administration is just a, a request too, too compelling uh, to decline. Any chance this is in relation to the Aaron Aaron endorsed ticket? We, it has no reaction to any other ticket. It's simply us uh, joining forces to try to put Minnesota forward. When did you get the call from the Attorney General, uh, and what was your initial reaction? Well, it was one of surprise. Um, and um, like I said, I, I was honored to get the call. And so we, uh, we got together on Sunday and started some initial uh, discussions. And I was uh, pleased to um, learn that she would anticipate a collaborative uh, administration, perhaps not unlike the relationship between Mondale and Carter, which uh, in many ways transformed uh, that office. So um, with uh, Lori's remarkable uh, administrative experience, uh, what do you, you must manage three or 400 people yeah, now, yeah, over all the state employees. agencies, yeah. all the state boards. Yeah. Uh, my background and experience is, is in a legislative arena. So we feel that we, we complement each other uh, very, very well. And um, it was just a, a call and a request mm -hmm. that was too compelling too compelling uh, to not accept. And when did it happen, sir? Did well, we, um, we uh, both uh, met, like you said, on Sunday, Sunday. Um, yep. with uh, my wife, Mary. Yep. And uh, Mary, went high, Mary and I went home and, yep. and uh, talked it over and made a decision uh, early this morning mm -hmm. to uh, wrap it up and mm -hmm. go forward with it. Mm -hmm. You're taking and that's on two other candidates here, two other teams mm -hmm. that have extensive experience. Obviously, Congressman Walsh has worked with him in Congress. You certainly know uh, Representative Brooks. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say, why are you, why are they not worthy of winning this August 14th primary? Why are you better than them? Sure, we're not running against uh, Tim or against Aaron. We're running for Minnesota and uh, we're running based on what we think we can offer to the people of Minnesota using the expertise that both of us have. Um, in terms of our own backgrounds, um, you know, Rick has uh, represented, I think, 42 of the 87 Minnesota counties at one point or another, either in the 8th Congressional District or in the 6th Congressional District, yeah, I think, second. before then, the old second. And so um, he's uh, won eight uh, elections. I've won three statewide elections. Um, I have gotten uh, more than a million votes uh, each of the times and have been the highest vote-getter on the DFL uh, constitutional office uh, ticket. 
uh, in the past, and so we think we offer a ticket that can win, but more importantly, it's not about us, it's about the people in Minnesota. And again, the, the only pledge we make today is to put the people of Minnesota first and to do the best we can to uh, help Minnesotans. Would you like my cabin? As I mentioned, I uh, had my name placed into nomination, and after the balloting came back, because I wasn't completing these pledges and I wasn't completing these questionnaires, it wasn't uh, too much of a surprise to me. Uh, the number one question I got on the floor of that convention is, uh, you know, why aren't you uh, filling out our pledges? Uh, and I'm not going to do that, just like Governor Polanyi's not going to do it. And so when that ballot came back, it allowed me to step back and. Uh, you know, evaluate uh, what options there may be, and uh, this is what we're doing today and moving Minnesota forward. Who knows? I mean, you don't you don't know uh, how balloting goes, and they had big business in front of them. They had a you know governor's endorsement uh, as well to get on with, and I decided to step back and let the convention move on with their business. Did the tie to the NRA? You know, um, I think the biggest issue that I had on the uh, convention was the pledges and the questionnaires. I mean, there were literally, you know, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of, you know, questionnaires and questions and pledges. And um, I was not certainly going to make pledges uh, in a legal office. Uh, as a chief legal officer, you're supposed to decide issues based upon the facts and based upon the law. And I wasn't going to make pledges. I mean, I saw questions. Um, one of the number one pledges and uh, top question I got was, would you uh, pledge to take guns away from police officers? And the answer is no, I would not. Um, the first order of government is to protect the public and keep the public safe. And, um, and I think, uh, um, you know, I would not do that. I, 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 uh, I, I believe uh, police officers play an important role. Um, in terms of the issue of guns, um, you know, as Attorney General, I've been involved in over 200 cases. Uh, involving guns and the use of guns in criminal cases where we've prosecuted those cases to the full extent of the law, very aggressively, very zealously prosecuted those cases. I've protected the people of Minnesota from homicides, from gun violence, from the use of guns. And I think as we look at where Minnesota stands right now, we have a problem with school violence. We have a problem with safety in our schools. And we need to protect our children. Uh, we need to keep them safe. Children shouldn't be afraid to go to school uh, because of getting shot, and parents shouldn't be afraid to send their kids to school out of fear of getting shot. And we need to do uh, what we can to protect our children. Um, uh, personally, on the issue of guns, uh, Senator Latz had some bills that I support. He had a bill uh, that would have allowed for red flag provisions so that people who shouldn't have guns don't have guns. I support that bill. I think that makes a lot of sense to give judges uh, authority to be able to restrict access to guns from people who shouldn't have them. As well, um, he had a, a provision uh, dealing with background checks and, uh, you know, having people have to apply for a background check and then that background check is good for a period of time. I, I support that type of, of measure. Um, I think we also need to look at these automatic weapons uh, that, and that's something new. I mean, we, we didn't see that as much, you know, 10 years ago. Now we're seeing problems with AK-47s and automatic weapons and I certainly support taking a look at that as well. And John, I, yeah. Tell us where you stand with the NRA. Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, it's important to note that uh, Attorney General Swanson and I are both strong supporters of the Second Amendment. Uh, people have a right to have a gun for personal protection, mm -hmm. for trap shooting, recreation, um, and, and of course for, for hunting. Yep. Uh, having said that, we've always had a fair measure of gun safety uh, yep. laws on the books over the years. For example, um, you know, you can't have machine guns. Well, if a bump stock turns a semi-automatic yeah. rifle into a machine gun, it should be illegal. It should, so, absolutely. Um, there, there's a much greater agreement uh, among uh, General, uh, Attorney General Swanson and myself on, on a number of, of gun safety issues. Mm -hmm. that, but we're going to try to bring the, uh, Minnesota together yeah. through the legislature absolutely. and find as many good common sense solutions as we can and uh, that we can enact into the law. We're not going to let uh, the perfect be the enemy of the good. Absolutely. Have you stand with the NRA? Have you been endorsed by the NRA in the past? Actually, if you go look at uh, opensecrets.org, uh, they spent more money against me than anybody in the nation um, <laughs> trying to defeat me. So 
but that was based on a lot of misinformation. I've always, you know, hunting is, is, is uh, in my family, is as close to Christmas and Easter, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a family gathering. It's a ritual that mm -hmm. we all look forward yeah. to. Um, we were, um, uh, Attorney General Swanson and I were trying to decide which one of us was going to be the top of the ticket. And um, she challenged me to a, a trap shooting contest, <laughs> and I knew she'd win, so I agreed to be uh, the lieutenant governor. You know, I, first of all, I've never taken any money from the NRA, and I've never uh, received any money. I've never requested any money uh, from the NRA, nor do I think I would get any money from uh, the NRA. And uh, there was one year uh, that I was endorsed, it goes back eight years ago, uh, from the NRA. And frankly, that year I think it probably had more to do with who my opponent was for Attorney General than me in many ways. Some groups will endorse you based on who you are. Other times groups will endorse you based upon who your opponent is. I was running against a very peculiar gentleman with a very peculiar history. And I think he got endorsed, I got endorsed by a lot of groups that year. Uh, that uh, probably uh, normally uh, would not look at endorsing me, including people told me at one point the Republican Party was even having a debate that year in terms of whether they should endorse me. Yeah, hi, he hello. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. We we are going to appeal it, and essentially what it um, said is we brought the case on behalf of you know a host of students who were members of the criminal justice program, and those students had enrolled in a degree program costing seventy thousand dollars a year a criminal justice degree, when in fact the criminal justice degree would not even train you to be a police officer in Minnesota. Essentially, what the court said is everybody who testified at the trial gets their money back. But if you didn't testify at the trial, uh, then you can't have your money back. The problem with that is that there were you know, some 600 students who were part of the criminal justice program. If you tried to have 600 students testify in a court case, the court case, I mean, it could go over a year, and that's just not feasible. And so, yes, we are going to petition the Supreme Court on that to try to help make sure that everybody can have a right to their money back, both the students who testified and all of the other witnesses who were similarly affected but didn't have the opportunity to testify because it was only a month-long trial. Yeah, so um, I called uh, Congressman Nolan because I have a phenomenal amount of respect for Rick and Mary. Uh, they are people who are just as genuine and salt of the earth as they come. They're people who care about people. Um, I'm somebody who cares about people, and I've gotten to know them so well over the dozen years that I've been in elected office, being up in the 8th Congressional District. The kind of issues that we talk about when we're up there is you know, issues like health care, like jobs, like the economy, like pensions, like broadband, higher education. And he's been a remarkable leader for our state. And I think it's incredibly important to bring people into public service who have something to offer. One of the things I would intend to do as governor is to recruit uh, people like Congressman Nolan who have the passion, they've got uh, the know-how, they've got the commitment to public service, and actually invite them into public service and have them lead. It could be in uh, paid positions, it could be in unpaid positions. Um, it's something I've done as Attorney General is actually tap that kind of expertise and bring in the best and brightest minds to help lead our state forward. We do. I'm very, very confident we can build a competitive campaign. Uh, we intend to you know, file for public office. We're going to start building the infrastructure of the campaign right now. I've been on the ballot in the last three general elections. When I first ran for attorney general, I ran in a primary in 2006. So I was not the endorsed candidate when I ran for attorney general. I was unendorsed, actually, and I ran against an endorsed candidate. Uh, Congressman Nolan has been involved in multiple primaries. He's won eight campaigns, including very competitive uh, tickets. Um, as I mentioned, in the last two times I ran for re-election, uh, I received over a million votes. I'm the only one on the DFL ticket at the state office level who received over a million votes. Um, I've been the top vote getter uh, in the Democratic Party for any constitutional office. And, and I think people know my record and they know Rick's record. And ultimately what they know about our records is that we're people who care, who want to serve the public, who believe in helping people. We've got compassion, we've got empathy, and we think we have a lot of smarts too that we can put together to 
move people forward and help people's lives. And so I'm very confident we're going to be able to do this. Are you planning to reverse anyone for AG? I am not. Do you want my cats to run? What's that? He's keeping his options open. I just I have I have not even heard that. I have not even heard. Would you like that? He says he's keeping. You know, I'm not getting involved in the attorney general's race. That's going to be up to the people of Minnesota who to vote for as attorney general. All right. Thank you all. Look forward to talking to you here in the weeks ahead. I appreciate it. Thank you.